Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. On the past series discussion on EMC consideration, I have discussed how can we actually partition the PCB. This video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually partition the different layers of PCB. For example, we have single layer PCB, double layer PCB, and also multiple layer PCB. For example, for a four layers PCB, we can partition, for example, the signal, the ground, and also the VCC. Okay, later on, we are going to take a close look. How can we actually partition the different layer in order to minimize the EMI issue? Next, what I want to discuss is on the routing of the signal trace. Okay, this is very important. If we are not careful, cross-talk or coupling can actually occur. If we run two trace close together, we may introduce cross-talk or coupling effect. And this can be a potential issue for EMC. This will be the part 41 series discussion on EMC consideration. If you're keen to know more about EMC, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a close look on all those videos in order to fully understand EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's quickly discuss how can we actually partition the PCB layer. As I mentioned early on, for PCB, we have the single side, we also have the double side, we also have the multiple layer. The reason why we prefer to have single side or double side PCB is because they are much, much cheaper as compared to the multiple layer. However, when we actually implement the design on a single side or double side PCB, we need to be extra careful in terms of controlling the EMI okay, because, okay, in more particular, the radiant EMI, because unintentionally, we may create a loop size. Remember the earlier on discussion on ground loop, for example, okay, we can unintentionally have a huge ground loop and this become an issue. And because of the large ground area, differential mode radiation actually occur. Okay, this is especially true for number one. If we are going to have a power supply decoupling capacitor loop, this become a big issue, especially on single side or double side PCB. BCC to ground trace separation and also signal trace to ground trace loop. Okay, so basically, in order to minimize this effect, okay, we actually good to implement in a multiple layer PCB. Okay, however, having said all the attractiveness of multiple layer PCB, the key issue of multiple layer PCB is because of cost. It is going to be more costly, about 2 to 2.5 times to fabricate in multiple layer as compared to double side band PCB. Okay, because as you can see from here, basically there are all different layers of PCB and this is the double side PCB, top view and bottom view. And this is a single side PCB. Everything is on one single layer. Over here, two layer, top and bottom layer. And over here basically is all the multiple layer. Let's quickly discuss how can we actually partition the PCB layer. Typically, let's say we only have a single layer PCB. Okay, basically, we can't do much. We can only put all the signal, all the power, all the ground onto this single layer PCB. Technically, there's nothing we can discuss about PCB layer. Everything all just put onto this particular layer. Next, if let's say we can have a double layer, okay, we can actually put the signal and also the ground onto one layer, sorry, signal and power onto one layer, while on the, another layer, we can put all the ground. However, when we actually implement this, okay, we need to have a better EMI control. Because of this, okay, because we are going to coupling against the ground, 
you are going to have more capacity loading and this may reduce the speed. Next, can we also discuss about the double layer PCB? We can actually put everything onto the two different layer. This kind of configuration okay, where space is given to us, then we can afford to implement this kind of design. And last but not least, let's go to multiple layer, typically four layer PCB. What we can actually do is basically we can dedicate this layer basically to house all the component and also all the signal onto this first layer. The second layer can be all the ground. The third layer can be all the power. And the last layer can be all the signal again. Okay, because you can see this in a 3D view here. Basically, this is the first layer. Okay, we can have all the signal layer and also the component side. The second layer, we can have the BCC. The third layer, we can have the ground. And the last layer, again, we can actually round all our signal trace again. So basically, this is how we can actually partition our PCB in order to have a better chances to pass whatever test on the EMC. Next, I'm going to discuss how can we actually route the signal trace. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, crosstalk is a big issue. When we actually put two trace close together, okay, crosstalk or coupling can actually occur. So basically, this is what it mean. Crosstalk occurs when a wider or trace carry a signal run parallel to another conductor. Okay, as you can see from this diagram here, this is basically, for example, a clock. Basically, this will be the source of the noise. If this victim trace is actually running parallel, very close to the source of the noise, crosstalk can actually happen. And when this actually happens, it becomes an issue now. When crosstalk or coupling actually occur, a very small voltage will be induced into the victim. And that's where all the issue of EMC. A crosstalk increase with the proximity of the source and the victim wire, okay, which means that the nearer the source and the victim, okay, the more severe the crosstalk will be. Okay, crosstalk also will increase if the frequency increase or we actually decrease the rise time. And also maybe on the impedance of the victim, okay, may also encourage crosstalk. In short, okay, crosstalk can be expressed in this equation. Okay, at this video, we are not going to mention about this equation. Okay, later on, series discussion on EMC, I will introduce this crosstalk equation again. But like what I mentioned, for this video, I'm not going to emphasize on this equation. So what is the rule to reduce the crosstalk? Basically, we can use this 2W rule. Okay, what is this 2W rule? I think later on, on the next slide, it will be more clear. However, let me just briefly discuss about this 2W rule. Okay, we can separate trace okay, with minimum parallel run, okay, which means that we do not run all the trace in parallel as much as possible. So this will reduce the cross -talk. Okay, We need to separate two parallel trace at least 0 0.05 millimeter. I think this is wow, very close. Okay, uh, technically, it's very close. I think it's also a big challenge. So later on, when you actually see how we actually can implement, for example, a ground trace to ensure that cross talk or coupling will be minimized. Okay, so this is what you mean here. So we can insert a guard trace or a ground trace between the source and victim. I think the next picture, you can see it more clearly. Okay, so you can see over here, for example, over here, we also don't want to put our signal to the edge of the PCB. When we actually have this kind of issue, the potential EMI radiation can actually happen. However, if we can put this signal trace, okay, so this will be the signal trace. And basically, this is the guard trace over here. Basically, this is all connected to the ground. So when actually coupling happen, it may couple to the ground rather than radiate out. You can see here, because I have a ground source here, and this coupling or cross all happen, this may encourage them to couple over to the ground plane. And this will be shunned to the ground. And this actually minimizes the effect of radiate EMI. However, for this case here, in the absence of ground trace, okay, this thing straight away coupling up 
and this become a radiation source which may incur a EMI issue. Okay, so basically, how can we minimize all this? Next slides will discuss all. The basic of 2W rule is to provide adequate isolation between two traces so as to minimize coupling between the two traces. The 2W rule state that the minimum distance separation between the edge of two traces must be two times the width of the trace. The drawback definitely will be the area of the PCB. When we actually incorporate this, we technically will occupy more space. So this is basically the trade-off. If you want to minimize coupling or crosstalk, then you need to sacrifice in terms of space. So therefore, if space can afford, okay, basically we do not want to run two lines close together and the minimum separation is actually 2W. Okay, what is actually 2W? Let's take a look on this in order to understand. For example, assume a clock line is 6 mu wide. Okay, so basically, imagine this is 6 mu wide. Okay, no other traces can exist within a minimum of 12 mu edge to edge. So this is what it means. For example, this is a clock line. Basically, there are 6 mu wide here. So basically, I need to incorporate 2 times 2W two root. So basically, anything that I want to run parallel, they cannot be closer than 12 mu. Okay? So if I need to have more than 12 mu in order to minimize crosstalk issue here. Okay, so on another situation here, again, you can put this ground trace over here. Okay, so basically, you can put a ground trace in between these two lines that run parallel together. So instead of this coupling directly to the victim, okay, imagine this for this case here, okay, the noise can just couple over to the victim and this become an issue for EMI. Okay, but for this case here, for example, this is the noise source. Again, instead of coupling to the victim because the ground trace is nearer to the noise source, majority of the noise source were coupled to the ground trace and this will be actually shunned to the ground and minimize the effect of the noise source coupled over to the victim. So this is how we can minimize all the cross talk or coupling effect is by having this ground trace in between the two lines that we run to run together on para, for example. So instead, direct coupling to the victim, majority of the coupling actually take place to the ground trace very little will be coupled over to the victim. And because of this, we minimize the EMI issue. The advantage of having gut trace or shunt trace basically include, they reduce the crosstalk between two trace by decreasing the mutual capacity coupling. Another thing is basically they provide an additional alternative low impedance return path to the image plane return path. Okay, so this is what I have discussed. Okay, for example, this is a trace. Okay, in order to protect coupling from occur, I actually can incorporate this shunt or ground trace basically to protect any coupling effect. Okay, basically, uh, this is a little bit in Singapore, we, we use the word kiasu. Okay, we worry. So therefore, we can implement this shunt trace here. Okay, so instead of coupled to the victim, most of the coupling will actually couple to either one of the trace, which is grounded. So therefore, we actually remove the noise source indirectly in this case here. I think you guys got the idea what I want to explain over here. So the key idea is basically if we can afford space, we can also run a lot of ground trace along with all the traces, the signal traces. And with this, we actually minimize the crosstalk. Okay, again, this is a little diagram here to explain how can we actually minimize crosstalk. Okay, for example, this is a signal over here. Okay, so what you can do is like what I mentioned earlier on, we can implement this ground trace over here. Okay, we also can implement this ground trace over here. And we can add additional features. For example, we can have VR, ground VR, okay, to further enhance the protection against crosstalk over here. So instead, let's say imagine that there's another line that runs parallel. So instead of this noise source coupled to the victim, what happened here is basically like what I mentioned earlier on. Crosstalk mainly happened all to the 
ground trace or to the VR, and this actually minimizes the EMI issue. Okay, so this is how we can actually incorporate ground trace to minimize coupling effect or cross stock effect. The guide to avoid a 90 degree corner bend. Okay, most of the time when we actually route a signal trace, we probably have this 90 degree. Okay, we want to avoid this 90 degree corner bend. Okay, when a trace meet a bend on the PCB, its capacitive unit length actually increase, while its inductive unit length actually decrease. Okay, this will result in an effect similar to capacitive loading that occur during signal transmission. In short, maybe let's not dwell so much on all this line, technical line here. So the key thing is basically we want to avoid a 90 degree bend. So in order to minimize all this capacity effect, we actually can incorporate like for example, a 45 degree bend. It's always better than a pure 90 degree bend. So basically we can make a round over here. Okay, basically when we actually do this, we actually reduce the amount of reflection for signal rounding the corner. Okay, so basically, this is some of the suggestion how we can actually route the signal trace. Okay, with this, I would like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much. See you.